All right, now that you're logged in, you can start to create a project. So instead of load, we're going to go to create and we're going to create a blank new project. And you'll see that that opens real time in the browser. And this uploading screen that you saw in the window here, that's uploading all the assets into the cloud and synchronizing it with your local system. You'll notice in the middle here, you have this amazing 3D world. And right now there's six lights in it. You can, of course, click any light uh, to take a look at the, the properties. But let's take a walk through the entire inspector and the editor here. So let's take a walk starting at the top left. Top left, we have our menu bar. Save, auto save is on by default. You have load project. So if you click the load project, it'll actually take you into your load project menu again. You can simply get back to your project by clicking your project. It'll take you right back in. If anything goes wrong, it has auto save, so you can just refresh the browser and get back into it. It is all web based. You can also export a project, and that will export everything in the project ready to go exactly how you have it. You can share this with colleagues or friends, and they can pick up where you left off. You can, of course, also log out. Beside that, you have the ability to rename the project, and we'll call it Spheres. Great. Below that, you have Scenes. And with Scenes, you can right-click, and you can either duplicate a scene or add a new scene. Beside that is your world controller. And when you click the world controller, you'll notice that on the right hand side of the screen, an inspector panel happens to open up. And this happens with anything in your scene. If I click a light, the inspector panel changes. If I click an object, the inspector panel changes. And we'll get into that. But for now, let's start with the world. The world controller is a button here. You have the ability to turn on and off skyboxes, which is a background. I'll show, we'll get into that later. You can turn on and off shadows. Uh, different qualities of shadows. You can turn them on and off. You can also add code, which is already built in right now for augmented reality, but you can add different code in there as well. And of course, you can change the background color to whatever you like. Okay, so once, once you've figured out the world controller, then below that, you have add a video, add a light, add a camera, add a HUD or button, configuration, object groups, and primitive shapes, or add 3D shapes. Now, what you'll notice about this is everything that's in this column here in the top left is actually in your scene. So for example, when I click a light, you'll notice that it opens the menu and shows me which light I'm clicking on. And that goes for anything in your scene. So that's my left light. That way you understand where everything is, and if you get lost, you can click anything in the scene and it'll show you everything that's in your scene. Below your scene, is actually your assets. Now these assets could be, for example, skyboxes or objects or 3D textures, anything can be brought into here. And once you've imported something, it will reside in your assets. Your assets is different than your project file or your, your world here because it's actually not imported yet. So you may have things in your assets that are not necessarily in your scene yet. Okay, so you've got your scene, your assets, and what you'll notice at the bottom here is you actually have a visual representation of your assets as well down here. So you'll notice as I'm clicking, it's changing the assets folder and giving me a visual representation. This is very handy when you have a lot of assets to bring in, whether it's 3D or texture files, and you wanna see a visual representation. It just makes it much, much easier to do that. Now, if you click the next button over on that is the console, and the console keeps a log of your coding. So if you put a code and there happens to be a logic break, it will give you information on that logic break so you can quickly identify what the problem is and fix it. Now, like we said on the right hand side, we've got this inspector panel and anything I click, whether it be a HUD button or a light or a 3D object in 3D space, an information panel pops up here and they're all different and we'll get into that soon. But just a quick overview of that for objects, for example, you have transform. So your ability to move things around and you can scale, rotate and position and you can also change the pivot, which we'll get into in later subsequent uh, meetings. You have texture files. So you have albedos, emissive, roughness, AO, and these are all part of the PBR or physically based rendering pipeline. You can change to regular rendering pipeline by simply switching that off and you'll notice that albedo switches to ambient and these change to diffuse, UV animation, specular, normals, specular power, and opacity. And when you're on PBR, 
You have albedo, emissive, roughness, ambient occlusion, metalness, normals, and opacity. Below you have a menu for lighting effects and also for UV animation, which we'll get into in more detail later on. Next tab over, you have a play button there, and that's actually for animation. So if this object had an animation, you'd be able to see that there. You also have an information tab, which gives you the file size. So this particular object is 62 kilobytes. It represents 2,400 triangles or polygons, um, 1,390 vertices, and positions, normals, UVs, meshes. You, you know, you need all this information, but it's all right there at your fingertips. And also you have a unique identifier for every object in your scene. So you can start to use this for code if necessary in the future, and each one has a unique identifier. Next tab over is our code tab, and that allows us to drop code in here and assign um, things to buttons. For example, when I click the AR button, it has an AR toggle on, which triggers this configuration. And we'll get into that later, but each code snippet has a number of different menus here. And the whole idea is that if you don't know how to code, uh, you'll be able to actually still do everything you want to do within this without having to code. Moving to the left here, we have our uh, information about our account. So your account overview gives you the name of the account, email, when you joined, uh, your plan, and your storage projects, very similar to the other intro menu. You have your security, you can change your password, and of course you can upgrade your plans simply like you did before with the edit button here, and you can do that. Okay, we'll return to the editor. Beside that, you have an information button. So say, for example, you forget this tutorial and you really want to know what all these buttons do, you can simply click Show Hints, and you'll notice a little I button appears above a number of the different um, buttons on the system. You can hover over that button, and it'll give you a little video and give you some information. For example, there's the world, how to adjust things, new object groups, JavaScript, etc. So you'll realize that there's a, an eye over everything when you click that button, and when you don't need it, you just simply turn it off. This is your undo redo button. And below undo redo, you have what's known as our gizmo tool. So you can click any object, and you see this uh, arrows up and down, left and right, on the X, Y, and Z axis. You'll also see a rotation tool, and you can have both of them on, or you can have one on. It doesn't matter, when you grab the rotation tool, you can start to rotate things in 3D space. And you can do it on an axis by simply hovering over a ring, or you can just grab the object from anywhere and you have, oops, you have a free roam ability to go in any direction, okay? Next to that, you have this arrow button here, which resets everything. And then you have your ability to turn on and off your grid, which is kind of cool. Now, sometimes you get lost. Maybe, for example, you're way down here. You don't have your grid on. You don't know where anything is. You can simply click any object in your scene and click F, and it will fly you into the center of that. Now, if you get lost, for example, I don't know if this is up, down, left, right, I can simply click this return button here, and it takes me back to my zero state. So no matter where I am in, this, in the world, I click this, it takes me back to zero state. Moving left here, we have our feedback button. When you click that button, it will allow you to uh, give us feedback immediately into our dev team. So if you're having um, a bug or a problem with roughness, for example, it's a general request or an error, you can give a description of the error and then hit send and it'll go right to our development team. So that's very handy for giving us feedback so we can improve as quickly as possible. I'm going to skip over those two over to import. Import is where you import files. So if we go to the courses here, we'll go to Sphere, we'll bring in this project here. And you'll notice a menu pops up and I can select the objects that I want to bring in or I can just add a new folder and drop them all into my new folder and we'll call that sphere. It's very important to keep everything named properly and you know like I said in the beginning parts of these to keep everything organized is very very important otherwise you'll start to hate life later on in the process. So I just imported those files I can click assets here and you'll see when I click my assets folder my asset representation down here. I can see Malbedo, Metalness, Normals, Roughness, and the object file. So with that, we're going to start into Primitive Shapes.